Hey everyone, how's it going? This video is going to be just sort of a complete overview of all of the vehicles that are currently available in Halo Infinite. Uh, it's going to be a pretty long video, so I'll try my best to sort of put chapters in there. So if you want to jump around and look at one particular vehicle, rather than trying to scroll through the whole thing, I'll do that. Um, but basically the way it's going to be broken down is at the beginning of this video, I'll sort of talk about some general tips and things like that, that sort of apply to all of, all of the vehicles for the most part. And then I'll get into what will be the bulk of the video, which will be looking at each vehicle individually one by one. And the way that's going to be broken up is at the start, again, I'll sort of do sort of an introductory overview and talk about the vehicle a little bit, but then I'll get into what I think is probably the more interesting aspect of it and sort of look at the damage profiles of each vehicle, both in terms of how much damage it can take from various weapons, and then also if it has a weapon attached to it as well, so like the Warthog has the, the gunner attached to it, um, I'll look at the damage profile of that weapon as well and sort of do a time to kill uh, compilation using that weapon, uh, looking at, you know, for example, how long it takes to destroy a brute chopper with the Warthog's gun. Um, so I'll do that for each vehicle and um, sort of give some additional tips along the way, talking about some vehicles have weak points that will make it uh, destroy faster uh, and things like that. So I'll throw those tidbits in there as well. First off, I just wanted to quickly touch on the settings that are available for vehicles specifically. So if you go into the settings, uh, I'm on keyboard and mouse, but it's the same for controller. Uh, if you scroll down, there is a section on vehicles. So uh, whether you want to like look up uh, what is all available in terms of hotkeys or change something, you can do that here. One that I did want to call out specifically for vehicles is this uh, switch seats hotkey. So I, I think that's a really useful hotkey and I use it quite a bit. Um, so that'll allow you just to sort of, depending on what vehicle you're in, switch seats really quickly. So if you want to go from the driver to the gunner uh, back and forth, you can do that rather than trying to like get out and then run around to the back and get back in. Uh, it's also really useful for the Scorpion and Wraith if you sort of accidentally get in the turret or you accidentally get in the driver's seat and you want to be in the other. Um, you can sort of quickly swap back and forth rather than, again, getting out and then trying to get into the right seat uh, manually. Another vehicle setting that's kind of interesting is this movement assisted steering that you can turn on and off. So it's towards the top uh, under mouse and keyboard uh, where you can check this on or off, uh, similar for controller. Uh, so it's right here. And that'll basically just allow you to turn a little bit uh, with either the A and D key on mouse and keyboard or the left joystick um, while you're driving, as opposed to sort of using Halo's traditional camera focused steering. Uh, so if I drive forward and I hold down my D key, you'll see that it, it, it turns a little bit uh, without needing to move the camera. I don't personally find myself using that very much. I just sort of like the traditional camera focused steering. But if you find yourself, maybe you feel like the steering isn't um, comfortable for you, uh, maybe, you know, try messing around with that to see if it helps. Another call out is that the vehicles sort of have this damage overload warning that they'll do where the vehicle will start flashing red. Um, and at that point, it's going to explode and there's nothing you can do about it. It just sort of is on a timer. So that's a call out for sort of two scenarios. Um, one, if you're the one trying to destroy the vehicle, you sort of know that you've done enough damage and it's going to blow up uh, with, you know, you don't technically need to damage it anymore. Uh, and on the other side of that, if you're the one driving the vehicle and somebody's trying to blow you up, uh, that's sort of your signal that you need to get out of the vehicle because it is about to blow up. Um, so we'll just sort of demonstrate that here real quick so you can sort of see what that looks like. We got one rocket shot off, then we'll do... So now we see we got the red warning sign. You can sort of hear the whining of the engine. And then it blows up. Next, we'll talk about how to disable vehicles. And you can do that in one of three ways. Uh, you can use the disruptor gun, the shock rifle gun, or the dynamo grenades. Um, I put together a, sort of a little compilation that I'll add after this, and it'll sort of go through three different vehicles just to sort of show that the method is the same regardless of if it's like a small mongoose or the tank, it's all going to be the same. So it's going to be seven shots from the disruptor gun, uh, two shots from the shock rifle, and then just uh, hitting it with one dynamo grenade. So you'll sort of see that in, uh, again, this compilation we're about to show, um, but I'll just sort of demo it here real quick so you can sort of get an idea of what that looks like. So you can sort of see, uh, I just disabled 
the vehicle temporarily and the player can no longer drive the vehicle or shoot their weapon. Moving on to the concept of hijacking vehicles and boarding vehicles. So you can hijack uh, all the vehicles in the game with the exception of the Wraith and the Scorpion. Uh, it works a little bit differently for those two vehicles and we'll sort of cover that when we talk about them individually. Uh, but excluding those, uh, hijacking sort of works the same for all of the vehicles where you can sort of run up to it and kick the player out and steal their vehicle and drive away. Uh, <clears throat> you can also do this with the grapple, which is really cool. So from a distance, uh, you can sort of do the same thing where you can kick them out and then steal their vehicle. Uh, in addition to that, uh, you can also use the grapple to sort of quickly get into an unoccupied vehicle as well, which is really cool. Uh, but again, we'll sort of do another little compilation showing you all of the features of hijacking. All right, so now we will start getting into the details of each vehicle and sort of go through them one by one. Uh, again, this is going to sort of be broken out into um, two or three parts, depending on the vehicle. So sort of an introductory overview about the vehicle and then um, sort of looking at how much damage it can take from various weapons. This is going to be sort of limited to weapons where it makes sense to try and destroy a vehicle. So. You're not really going to use the BR or the assault rifle to try and destroy a vehicle. So those aren't really included in that. Um, and then after that, if the vehicles like the gun goose here has a weapon attached to it, uh, we'll look at that weapon itself and see what sort of damage it does to all of the vehicles and players. Starting off with the Mongoose, so not really a whole lot to say about this vehicle. Uh, it's a two-person vehicle, so you have your, your driver and then you also have the back seat as well. Um, probably the most useful way to use this is in Capture the Flag, so you get a sort of a buddy in the back seat, uh, drive to the flag, uh, he jumps out, grabs the flag, hops back in the back seat, and then you sort of drive away for a quick capture. Other than that, um, really just sort of a standard vehicle to sort of quickly get around the map. I'll sometimes utilize it at the very beginning of a match to sort of hop on it and then drive to a power weapon spawn uh, right at the beginning. Um, other than that, you know, not really too much else to say about it. The other call out I would say is just to make sure that you're utilizing the, the e-brake when you're turning. So uh, sort of tapping that, what are you, whatever the hotkey is for the e-brake on your game, uh, sort of tapping that as you're making turns, that'll sort of really help out uh, hitting those tight turns without sort of spinning out. And you can sort of do quick turnarounds and things like that. So uh, yeah, just making sure that you're using the e-brake while you're driving around. Now looking at it from the other side and using weapons against the mongoose, uh, we'll sort of go through different scenarios with weapons and grenades, uh, showing you sort of how many shots it takes and things like that. 
uh, to destroy the mongoose. Uh, keep in mind the mongoose is a fairly weak vehicle, so it can be a risk to use, uh, particularly if you have a passenger. It can sort of be a quick double kill uh, that you're giving the enemy. Um, but yeah, we'll sort of go through uh, different weapons and grenades and show you the impact of using that against the mongoose. All right, moving to the Gun Goose, which, you're not going to believe this, has guns on it. <laughs> uh, but yeah, basically identical to the Mongoose. The uh, only difference really is that it does have those two cannons on front, uh, so you can fire those. Uh, really everything that I said about the Mongoose sort of carries over to this gun, so we won't focus too much on anything additional. Really the focus of covering this vehicle will be the, the guns. So. One thing to call out with this is that it does shoot straight forward. So even if you're like pointing in the camera um, left or right, it's going to sort of move a little bit. So you can see it's sort of moving more to the left that way and more to the right that way. Um, but for the most part, you really just want to sort of drive and shoot straight ahead in order to aim it. Um, so it's really hard to aim to the side if you're going to try and do that with your um, cursor or your uh, crosshairs. So, um, yeah, that's really the main difference of the Gun Goose. We'll go through uh, some of the, the damage profiles of it and see what it does to uh, both an enemy and uh, some of the vehicles as well. One thing that I should have mentioned, too, is that you can aim it uh, vertically to a certain extent. Uh, so you can shoot uh, down and up. Uh, there's a limit to that, so that's about as high as it goes. So if you try and aim up any higher, uh, it's going to sort of stop right around that level. So uh, you do have the ability if somebody's sort of on high ground to hit them. Uh, just it's it's sort of limited to a certain extent. Moving on to the Warthog. So uh, this is sort of the classic vehicle that started it all in Halo. Uh, Three-person vehicle, so you have your driver, uh, the passenger seat, and then the gunner in the back, which you can shoot from. Um, similar to the Mongoose, uh, you kind of want to utilize that e-brake when you're moving around, which will help sort of control things a little bit and get around tighter turns. Uh, otherwise, you do have sort of the potential to sort of spin out uh, again similar to the mongoose how that controls um, but other than that yeah we'll go through 
uh, the gunner and sort of the aspects of that and the, the effect that it has on other vehicles and the amount of damage it does. And then also do the, the weapons compilation as well to see how much damage it can take from various weapons. There is one important call out with this vehicle and that it does have a weak point. So we'll talk about that as well when we get into the weapons and how you can sort of utilize that to destroy it uh, much quicker. One thing I did want to call out uh, specifically for the Warthog is the sort of weak point that it has on the front hood here. So primarily I'm focused on this black thing right here, but in general just sort of like the front of the hood. So I'll demonstrate um, with the Hydra. This is this really is most applicable to the skewer, which you'll see. Um, but with the Hydra, I can sort of show you. So if you pop the hood up, uh, then this underneath area is sort of a, a weak spot. But um, with the skewer, again, if you hit this area right here, this sort of black thing, this part of the engine, I suppose. Um, That'll actually give you a one hit with the skewer. Again, I mean, I don't know if that's going to be sort of practical in a real game, trying to like actually aim and hit that area. But if you do hit it with a skewer, it is sort of a one shot kill to destroy the Warthog.
All right, now the Rocket Hog. So again, this is very similar to the Warthog. The obvious difference being that you have a set of rocket launchers in the back as opposed to the sort of chain gun on the Warthog. Um, so that'll be probably the, you know, the primary focus of covering this vehicle is the rockets and the effect that it has on um, vehicles and people. One call out with this is that it will lock on two vehicles if somebody is driving it. However, uh, if nobody's in the vehicle, so for example over here, nobody's in the Warthog over there so it's not going to lock on. However, if an enemy does get into the driver's seat and starts driving, this rocket launcher will then sort of have a lock on feature to it. Moving over to the map fragmentation uh, to talk a little bit about the Razorback. So I have actually sort of covered this vehicle in depth in a Razorback specific video that I made previously. So if you want all the, the details, you can sort of check out that video. The reason I, I wanted to sort of include it in this again is because it does have a little bit of a different armor profile compared to the Warthog and Rocket Hog. So this does take a little bit more damage. Uh, for example, uh, two rockets will blow up a Warthog, where this will withstand three rockets. So you'll sort of see that in the compilation video that it can take a little bit more damage. Um, but just sort of to rehash some of the stuff I've talked about in my previous video. Um, so this is sort of a passenger transportation type vehicle. Uh, it can hold up to four people. So you have your driver and your passenger, and then you can have two people in the back sitting here. Uh, and then the other cool thing is this sort of cargo hold. So this will hold some objectives. So you can put your power, two power cells in these two slots. And then you can also hold the, the flag here as well. So that'll allow you to do sort of solo flag runs with a vehicle. So you can uh, dock the flag in the back here and then drive, uh, drive away to, for a solo flag run. But again, uh, I sort of go into all those details in depth with my Razorback video. So if you want to check that out, uh, you can do that.
Moving on to the Ghost. So this is sort of a single person offensive based vehicle. Uh, it has two main features of it. So you do have a gun up front that you can shoot. Uh, and then it also has this boost feature. So that boost is going to be uh, whatever your uh, e-brake is for the mongoose. It's going to be the same. Uh, it also tells you on the bottom right. So you can see that mine is shift to boost around. Uh, and you can actually get around pretty quick in this thing. So um, the other, so not only can you like shoot people, obviously with the weapon, but um, maybe a more valuable weapon in terms of killing people. I think it was just the splatter feature of it since it is so maneuverable. Um, you can sort of get a lot of kills in big team battle maps as you're driving around. And you just sort of use that boost feature to quickly splatter people. Now we have the Brute Chopper. Um, so this is, again, sort of a single person offensive based vehicle. Uh, it's somewhat unwieldy to drive around in. It's not the most sort of user friendly vehicle. Uh, one thing I did want to call out sort of right off the bat is that you are somewhat exposed here on the back, as you can see, is sort of the, the makeup of the vehicle leaves you pretty exposed. Uh, however, from the front, you have a lot of protection so uh, sort of keep that in mind that from the front you're gonna be pretty well protected but from the sides and the uh, even the back to a certain extent but mostly the sides uh, you're gonna be super exposed so people can shoot you fairly easily uh, from the sides but anyways uh, driving around in it again it's a little unwieldy at times it does have uh, the boost similar to the ghost however this is a little bit different where the the ghost boost is unlimited and if I use the chopper boost you can see it's pretty limited <laughs> uh, so it, you just have a little bit of boost and then it has to recharge and then you can use it again so it is good for splattering uh, again you do have sort of that front protection so you sort of want to like go head on at people with it uh, and then obviously the gun so the gun is going to fire 
sort of similar to the uh, gun goose where it sort of can shoot a little bit to the left and right, but for the most part, it's, you just sort of want to aim straight ahead and drive to where you want to shoot. Uh, it does have a little bit more verticality um, or vertical uh, up and down shooting compared to the gun goose. So you can shoot up pretty high with it. Um, or at like the gun goose, I think sort of levels out right here, but here you can go up quite a bit. Um, it does have a little bit of a drop, it looks like on the bullets, uh, but yeah, maybe not. But um, anyways, uh, yeah, so those are the two primary offensive weapons is just sort of splattering people and then you've got the two gunners. So we'll take a look at, again, sort of the defense it has against uh, infantry based weaponry and then we'll see what it does to other vehicles as well. Similar to the other vehicles, we'll sort of go through that compilation of using the chopper's gun on all the other vehicles to see what the damage is like. However, with the chopper in particular, it also has sort of another unique attack where it can sort of do like a ramming damage. So I'm going to sort of demonstrate that here uh, real quick where it can actually do quite a bit of damage just running into en uh, other vehicles and enemies for that matter. Uh, but using that in combination with the weapon can be uh, pretty powerful. So. But you can see you can actually destroy anim enemies or vehicles uh, just simply by using sort of the front ramming feature of it.
All right, now a little uh, change of venue here, moving over to the high power map to take a look at the Wasp, which is one of the two aerial vehicles that you can use in Halo Infinite. So this vehicle is pretty cool. Uh, it's a vertical takeoff vehicle, so you can fly straight up with it. Uh, you can sort of hover and move in any direction that you want. So it has a ton of maneuverability. Uh, the You can change the hotkeys, but I think sort of the default setup is uh, your jump key is going to be up and then your crouch key is going to be down. Uh, and then you just sort of move like normal up or left, right, forward, back. So you can really uh, have tons of maneuverability with this vehicle. Uh, it's super fun to fly around uh, in. Uh, it has two weapons that you can fire. So starting off, you have sort of this machine gun and then you can switch using your swap weapon hotkey to sort of like a missile based weapon. Uh, the missile has quite a bit of delay on it. So you have to sort of, you can see the progress bar of the delay once you fire it. So it's relatively slow, um, but generally speaking, it's gonna be sort of the more powerful of the two, whereas the machine gun, it's constant fire, but a little bit weaker. So uh, we'll go through uh, like we have with the other vehicles and sort of look at what sort of damage it takes from uh, sort of in infantry based weapons. And then we'll look at the aspect of these two weapons on other vehicles and players. Uh, I'm going to probably focus more on the, the rocket aspect of it. I'll do a couple examples using the machine gun, but uh, I think for generally speaking for the vehicles, I'll, I'll sort of stick with the missiles and see what that does to other vehicles. Uh, before we get into the various weapons versus the wasp, uh, one quick call out about this vehicle and one of its weak points, which is this front windshield. So this can be destroyed, uh, and I'll show an example of that with the sniper, but uh, real quick, I'll just demo it. So you can destroy that windshield and it'll expose the, the driver. Uh, one call out on the missile, sort of like the rocket hog. Uh, it, it does have a lock on feature when you're using the rockets. So again, this warthog down here, I'm not locked onto it right now, but if a player were to get into it, uh, then that lock on will activate. So you'll see that as well.
And then one final tip, uh, just to try and get a little bit more out of the firepower of the Wasp. So the missiles take about three seconds to recharge, so you can fire one about every three seconds. So in the meantime, you can switch to your sort of machine gunner weapon and allow you to, in that downtime, sort of get some additional hits in. So uh, looking at this Warthog here, if we fire the missiles and then switch, and then sort of in your head count three seconds uh, and then switch and then sort of keep doing that back and forth you can sort of in that downtime uh, continue to have some firepower so this is the banshee which along with the wasp is the other flying vehicle that we get in the game currently so if we jump in and start flying around uh, sort of one of the first call outs is that it does have to constantly be moving forward so you can't sort of hover in place or move backwards uh, similar to what you can do with the wasps so it's sort of at a disadvantage there in terms of maneuverability uh, you can limit that to a certain extent by holding the back button which will slow it down and then on the opposite side of that it does have a boost which will allow you to zip around pretty quick um, for a limited amount of time, and then it does have to recharge. Uh, and then finally, sort of talking about maneuverability, it does have a, a backflip maneuver that you can do. So if you hold the back button plus whatever your crouch key is, I think by default, it will do sort of this backflip maneuver. Uh, for the weaponry, it does have two variations that you can switch between. So you have sort of this standard plasma gun, and then you can switch to a sort of a, a rocket variant of that as well. Uh, the rockets do have a delay, so you can see that charge in between shots on your crosshair there. For the sort of compilation that we'll go into against other vehicles, I think it's going to be a little bit more limited, and I'm not going to go through all the vehicles, simply because, honestly, I don't think this vehicle is very good for sort of anti-vehicle combat, and uh, I wouldn't recommend it for trying to take out other vehicles currently in its current state. Uh, primarily because the, the weapons don't do a whole lot of damage on this vehicle, and then sort of the fact that you have to m constantly be moving forward uh, makes it a challenge to get in a lot of damage uh, in sort of one go. So we'll sort of talk about that more, and you'll sort of see that in the compilation. But again, uh, not, not my favorite vehicle in terms of anti-vehicle combat.
so similar to the wasp, uh, I think you almost need to utilize this sort of strategy of utilizing both of the weapons at the same time, where you sort of switch between the plasma gun and the missiles to sort of get as much damage as you can out of it. Uh, unfortunately, another downside of this is that the delay on the missile compared to the wasp is a little bit longer too. So this is about four seconds between firing. So every four seconds sort of, sort of switching uh, back to the missile and switching to the plasma. Um, really, I, there's not a whole lot of cases where you're going you're to be able to destroy a vehicle even using that strategy uh, sort of in one go. So it's going to be a lot of like attacking and then running away and then coming back and attacking and doing a dive and then running away <laughs> and then coming back. So overall, uh, not my most favorite vehicle right now uh, unless they sort of get a damage buff to it. But I think it's a, it's a little bit too weak right now for it to be um, practical, really, as a um, anti-vehicle type weapon. I'd stick primarily towards just using it on uh, other players on the ground. Now we have the Wraith, which is sort of the Covenant variation of a tank. And it's probably the second most powerful vehicle in the game in terms of the armor and the firepower that it has uh, next to the Scorpion tank. So this vehicle has two primary weapons with it. So if you're the driver, you get this turret up top, which you can see me moving around, and that will shoot sort of a, a lob shot, plasma, bomb, rocket, what have you. And then you also have your passenger as well, which gets this turret up top. And you can see it also comes with a shield, which is nice. And that will shoot sort of a rapid fire plasma gun. So he's up there and then you'll notice that the driver is actually down in the front. You can see that hatch open up and the seats down there. So if I switch into that, you'll see me get in. So that's where the driver sits. Uh, like the other Covenant vehicles, this does have a boost. So you can use that to sort of move around a little bit quicker. It is sort of a slower vehicle, but using that boost will help you um, get around a little bit quicker in certain situations. Uh, it is a bulky vehicle, so you have to sort of be careful. When you use that, you might sort of bump around a little bit, but you do get quite a bit of boost with it, which is nice. Um, so again, we will go over the sort of armor profile of it and how it handles against weapons and other vehicles. You'll notice in the um, weapon section of the compilation, this uh, hatch, and that's sort of a weak spot for this vehicle. So we'll go over some, some clips of how you can take advantage of destroying this hatch and sort of quickly taking out this vehicle if, it's, if you're on the defensive side of it. Uh, so we'll take a look at that as well.
And now, finally, the big boy, uh, the Scorpion tank. So uh, this is about as big as it gets in terms of the vehicles you can use in Halo Infinite. Uh, super armored, has crazy firepower. Uh, if you're the driver, you get this um, cannon. That's basically a one shot for everything for the most part. And then uh, you also get one passenger that you can carry as well who gets this uh, machine gunner up front. So obviously this thing can take a ton of damage and it can dish out a ton of damage as well. Uh, probably the most you know powerful vehicle that's in the game. Uh, so we'll go over again uh, as we had with all the other vehicles, uh, the amount of damage it can take as well as the um, amount of damage it can do to other vehicles as well. Uh, as you can see, the sort of one downside of this vehicle is it is very big and sort of hard to maneuver around any sort of tight spaces. So you want to be very careful as where you're taking it. You can very quickly get sort of stuck in an area if you're not careful. And leading into that, the controls are sort of god-awful, in my opinion, for this uh, tank currently. I don't know if it's a bug or, or what, but this thing will just sort of do the exact opposite sometimes of what you want it to. Um, sometimes you'll hit reverse and it'll go forward. Sometimes you'll hit forward and it'll go reverse based off like where you're looking. Like right now, I'm, I'm in reverse right now and it's, I, it's, it's, it can be very annoying to drive. So basically, um, I, my one recommendation, I guess, is like if you want to go backwards, just turn your turret around and then drive forwards like that. And then if you want to go this way again, then turn your turret around and go forward that way. And just sort of use, if you need to like go forwards and backwards, uh, I would recommend this is the way you do it. So now I'm sort of backing up through this um, sort of alleyway. And then if I want to go forward again, then I just turn my camera around and again go forward. So other than that, uh, that's sort of the one downside is it is bulky and the controls are kind of terrible with it right now. Again, I don't know if that's sort of a bug or just how they intended it to handle. But anyways, uh, we'll go through the similar compilations as we have with the other vehicles. Before we get into the weapon damage versus the Scorpion, uh, just a couple quick call outs on some weak points that are available on this vehicle. So similar to the Wraith, uh, the Scorpion does have a destructible hatch, which is this section right here. So the driver is sitting uh, in this seat right here, and you can destroy this section of the tank, which will expose the driver. Uh, so we'll give some examples of that. And then also this top portion of the tank, this sort of armor plate will sort of pop off when you've done enough damage. And it's sort of similar to the Warthog that where we covered the, the hood, front hood portion, where that's sort of a weak point. Uh, again, I'll give some examples showing uh, hitting that versus not and showing the difference. It's not too big of a difference, but it does do more damage when you are hitting this exposed section of the tank. So we'll cover that as well.
All right. Well, uh, congratulations if you made it all the way through. Um, that was sort of covering all of the vehicles, uh, looking at their damage profiles and their characteristics and tips and tricks and all that good stuff. Um, if you have any other tips or um, like any weak points of vehicles that I missed, uh, let me know in the comments. That would be awesome. Um, hopefully this was interesting and helpful to you. And thank you for watching and we will see you later. Bye.